Vienna, the capital of Austria. It sits in the Danube Valley and is home to about one and a half million people. It's a city with an unrivaled music tradition, stunning Baroque architecture and a rich and complex history. We were here in early summer, a season to enjoy the wide open boulevards and the outdoor coffee shops. And it's at this time of year that you can appreciate why the Viennese are so proud of their city. I'm fond of Vienna, you know. <laughs> I'm born in Vienna, I have lived here all the time and I'm really fond of my city. It's a city of uh, culture and tradition, a city of romance and, uh, well, it's like a, like a fairy tale city, but it's not only a historic and romantic place, but it also goes with the time. It's a place where also young people uh, can live and find interesting things. And, uh, well, I think it's a place where it's really worth living and where it's, uh, life has a special flavour. Long before the millions of tourists started pouring into Austria, this country was home to the Habsburg family, one of the most powerful dynasties in Europe. They ruled this land and most of the surrounding region for centuries, from the 13th to the 20th. Their rule ended along with the First World War, which was ironically started by the assassination of the family heir, Franz Ferdinand. The Habsburgs certainly left their mark, from the huge Hofburg Winter Palace to the beautiful Schönbrunn Summer Palace. Empress Maria Theresa lived here during the 18th century. Even Napoleon called this home for a few years. Uh, we are from Moscow. What is your first impression? Well, first impression is very interesting. It has a very particular European ambience, uh, which uh, may be lacking in some other places. It's historical place. It's very interesting, actually. Vienna was hit hard during the Second World War. 75% of the city was damaged, 29% was destroyed. Austria was actually the first nation annexed by Germany at the start of the war. From 1938 to 45, this nation simply ceased to exist. The man responsible, Adolf Hitler, was Austrian. When Hitler's Nazis arrived, most of Vienna's Jewish community fled. Among them, Sigmund Freud. This building was once his home. We see here St. Stephen's Cathedral. That is the heart of the city of Vienna. It's really in the middle of the old town, of the center. It is a church which is more than 850 years old. The Second World War did an incredible damage. Actually, 40% of this church was destroyed after the Second World War. It happened in April 1945. And the whole roof was gone and the inside was very destroyed and the bell broke down and we remelted those broken pieces and made another bell. But um, so there's a lot of the 20th century inside the churches. You know, Vienna is a city where you've just got to get out and walk around. If you're a lover of architecture, then you'll find new inspiration on every street corner. And if you love classical music, well, Vienna's got it all. It might be performed by the famous Vienna Boys Choir. Or in a palace garden. Vienna was the birthplace of classical music, the stage for Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, Strauss, and of course Mozart. Now life was pretty tough back in the 18th and 19th centuries if you were a musician or a composer. Unless you had some sort of royal patronage, you often went hungry. Of course, many died paupers, and most were pursued all over town by landlords seeking unpaid rents. That's why you'll find 56 different houses that Beethoven lived in Vienna alone, and 12 different homes where Mozart rested his head. This is one of the most famous. It's called Figaro House.
But certainly genius number one was Mozart, who did so much when he was six, seven years old. He played in the Vatican for the Pope at the age of six. And on the legs of Empress Maria Theresia in Schönbrunn Palace, he played at the age of six. He could not reach the pedals of the piano. Wow. He was too short. It was Johann Strauss who made Vienna so famous with his composition, The Blue Danube. He died a century ago, but his waltz is immortal. Uh, he wrote about 550 uh, different pieces of music, and many of them have become very famous. The Blue Danube's waltz certainly is the most famous one known all over the world. Even long after their deaths, these composers continue to inspire. Walk through the central cemetery and you'll swear a symphony guides your steps. Touring the city sites might bring you to the Volksbrater, an amusement park with a giant Ferris wheel built in 1897. This became famous in the Hollywood classic, The Third Man. Getting around this city is easy, whether it's below the ground or above. Vienna has one of the most efficient public transport systems in Europe. Of course, there's a comprehensive underground, but one of the best ways to see the city sites is in one of these trams. <laughs> 